everybody. How is it going out there? Thanks for hanging out and joining me. Uh, Brian, how are we doing? Thank you. We're going to talk about this guitar. And in fact, it's so pearly white and gorgeous that uh, the monitor, my computer monitor, is, is shining off of it. So I'm actually going to turn my monitor down just a hair, just so we can get the full scope. Now, I uh, want to give a huge shout out, you guys, to uh, Gibson Guitar for inviting me back. We're going to be talking, it's called Back to Basics, uh, but we're going to be doing uh, BB Box, BB King style stuff. Honestly, I really can't get enough of BB King style licks. He plays his licks in a, you know, certain spot, you know, that we call the BB Box. But, I mean, if you go, everyone, I mean, really, take other amazing guitar players and a lot of my favorite licks that other guitar players do came from B.B. King. And I know John Mayer is, you know, a huge guitar player, a uh, current, you know, guitar player in his prime. And some of the tastiest, he li tastiest licks I think he does, you know, really come from that B.B. King spot and that kind of B.B. King influence. And that's just, I'm naming him because he is a, like, you know, current guitar hero. Um, so this, uh, if you guys don't fully know the story, B.B. King's guitar, uh, he called Lucille, and there's, I'm sure, better resources to tell you why it's called Lucille, but it had to do with a gig, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here so other people can chime in, um, but basically B.B. King was playing a gig, and a fight broke out, and a fire, does this sound familiar, Brian? Okay, like a fire broke out and the place burned down. I don't remember if B.B. King ran back in to get the guitar or the guitar survived the fire. Do you know which one, Brian? Someone can chime in with that. Brian's looking at your comments and it's up on Instagram. But basically, the fight that started the fire that his guitar survived was over a woman named Lucille. So I think if he it had some, you know, that that's the paraphrase. But anyway, he called the guitar Lucille. And if you look here, it's uh I've got like the exact specs, but if you look at it, it's a Gib it's basically a Gibson ES335, which is a what's called a uh, semi hollow guitar, which means that it's got hollow chambers, but then a block through the middle. This guitar is pretty heavy. Also, I can tell you know this was sent for me to just use for this for this uh, little series here from Gibson. So thank you guys, it's absolutely amazing. Got to say it never. Ne never sucks when a Gibson box arrives. Um, but I can tell that these got these have, uh, you know, heavy gauge strings. Um, it's been aged. It's actually got, um, I don't know if you guys can see the spot right there. It's kind of like a cigarette burn mark, you know, because it's based on his guitar. So I'm going to show you some BB King stuff, but let me, uh, so basically, it's BB King signature engraved bridge and pickups, uh, crown mother of pearl headstock inlay with the king, the crown, you know, the king of the blues. And staying true to BB King's original specs and tone, players will find a stereo veritone paired to Gibson 490R and 490T humbucker pickups. Everyone knows what that means. <laughs> Um, but basically, there's two outputs. I mean, we're just we're just streaming through the internet here, folks. Um, but it's got two outputs and controls um, to play stereo, basically. So different tones coming out of different sides, which is really cool. I found the setting that's not stereo because I'm just going through one amp here. But I found the setting. I went to the bridge pickup, and actually, if I roll the tone off a bit, you get this kind of thing. Uh, Sorry. Like so. Um and the, this finish is called Alpine White, which is so pretty. Um, also, this was only a limited run, limited run of 100 pieces, so I'm sending this back. 
to Gibson because of that. <laughs> um, uh, Maple center block. Uh, BB ran back in to get it. Ah, thank you. That was what I was. So BB ran in back to get it in the fire. And he was saying it was, you know, they were, the guys were fighting over Lucille. So if it was worth it, it her name has to be worth it kind of thing. Um, and this is no longer available. But the other thing that makes it unique that BB King always did, even though it's a 335 with the hollow sides here, there's no F holes. You see that, Brian? No F holes. It's covered right up. <laughs> but what I like about the semi hollow is, uh, and especially when you use that that neck pickup, it gives you like a nice woody sound that's different than a Les Paul. <laughs> Listen to the sustain. <laughs> it's a lot of sustain. Um, and also the the way it interacts with the amp, if I was cranked in here, the semi-hollowness gives you that really nice sustain. And like, depending on how close you are to the speaker of the amp, it gives you some of that sweet feedback. Now, BB King didn't play chords. He graduated out of that to just play licks. But let me talk about the BB box. And also, uh, once again, thank you to Gibson, you guys, for... Uh, for having me and we're on Instagram on Gibson. So what's up everyone. And then also uh, YouTube and Facebook we're talking about the BB box right now, Brian, any important questions? Yeah. What's um, so, so without the F hold, what, how does that change the tone? Well, I'm not sure exactly why BB King didn't like the F holes, but I can tell you when you're playing super loud, you know, like let's say he didn't, wasn't going through a house PA system. And he wanted to be loud enough to fill, like, let's say a 2000, you know, if you're using a, a tube amp to be loud enough for like, let's say a 3000 seat theater, um, when it's hot, fully hollow, it can give you feedback. So, well, it's a semi hollow, but I'm thinking that um, maybe he liked not risking any feedback at all, but still having that hollowness. I think also maybe, maybe he just dug it that way. You know, didn't like the F holes. Maybe you just thought it looked cooler. It does look cool. It looks super cool. And you still get, can you hear that through the amp? You know, my dogs are going to bark. They're, they think someone's knocking at the door. But but here it's all hollow. But then through the middle is the center block. See how it echo, you know, it's a chamber here. If I go over here, it's solid. So that's less feedback. But I would say even less feedback covering the F holes. All right, so let's take the blues in A. Now, even if you're a beginner, BB, the BB box, I think of it as based around the root of, you know, like the key of the blues that we're in. So if we're in blues in A, of course you have your classic blues scale minor pentatonic. But BB would use this little spot um, to really more sing the blues with the guitar than worrying about a scale. And he just found the spot to be the most uh, expressive for him. And if you were to study the theory of a lot of what he's doing is he's mixing bits of the major pentatonic and minor pentatonic, depending on the chords he's playing over. But that's what a singer would do naturally with their ear anyway. And by the way, you guys, I am also taking any, you know, questions or comments, you know, but I'm going to get into this right now. Now, the, the root on the B string is how we're going to plug it in. And so it's the 10th fret of the B string. Like so. So I have this loop here. Was I added one more note 
but we're bending it through the chord changes. Now, Kevin on Facebook, how are you? Yes, it's me. Uh, you said, what key is the BB box usually in? Here's the thing. The BB box is whatever key your music is in that you're playing over. So if I'm playing a blues in A, then I'm playing BB box with the root on A. So I find the A note on the B string. If I'm playing blues in E, the BB box is going to start on the root on the B string, but the E note, which would be the fifth fret of the B string. So if I'm playing blues in E all of a sudden, the BB box would be right here. playing blues in B flat. You got to You got to find the B flat on the B string so it's going to be 11th fret. Let's go back to the original key I was talking about, the key of A. Here, turn my Schwarzenegger overdrive off. So what you want to do is look at that root. It's 10th fret of the B string. And the, the what he does over and over is this vibe right here. He does a lot more than that, but a lot of his, the starting of his phrases are based on those two spots. So it's going to be uh, the middle finger on the 11th fret of the G. And you can slide into it. Now, that's not part of the minor pentatonic, and that's what makes this the BB box. It's a little bit of a hybrid between the A minor pentatonic and the A major pentatonic. And he's really singing with his ear, and he's played in the one spot so much that he just manipulates what he's hearing as a, as a singer in under his fingers. So you've got 11th fret on the G string, and then that root, which would be 10th fret of the B. So, And you go back and forth between those. John on Facebook. How are you doing, John? And hey, Instagram. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, John says, so is the BB box essentially the uh, three bottom strings or the second position of the minor pentatonic question mark? Well, I think there's a maybe could be a debate about it, but I think of it as the uh, G, B, and high E strings, which actually could be called the top three strings because of the, the pitch. I think of it when I'm thinking, quote unquote, the BB box, I am thinking just those top three strings, but um, I use the BB box. And since I'm not BB King, uh, I use other things too, because I'm um, pulling from all of my different guitar heroes to try and make my own thing out of it. So, and you know, a, a John Mayer is doing the same thing or Derek Trucks when he's not playing slide, you know, he's doing that same thing as well. But I do think of it as this little spot. And then here's where it gets really, really fun. On the B string, up a whole step from the root, so 12th fret. If you bend that 12th fret up a whole step, it's the major third of the one chord there, which is a C sharp note. 
In other words, it's a chord tone of that one chord. So watch when I bend that up. Now, if you bend it a whole step and a half step, now that's a minor third. Or actually, there's a you can do that, but uh, actually bend it a half step instead of a whole step. And you play that half step bend over the D chord, the four chord of the blues, D7, D9. So watch, I'll do a whole step bend on the one chord. You're gonna hear the change and I'm gonna do a half step bend. Listen to what that sounds like. Here it comes. four chord you have the half step in but then you also have whoa the whole and half step it's a lot there now on the high e string you have this little piece of a box thus the bb box you have uh 10 and 12 on the b string and then you're usually working on 10 and 12 on the high E if you're in the key of A. So watch. Here, check this out. Now, to really do a straight up uh, ode, a straight up ode to BB King, you do that little trill off on the high root. So, if we're in the key of A, you'd go all the way up here to the uh, 17th fret. You hit it and slide it back. So, I'll add that now. So, what I've got is the 11th fret on the G string, and then the 10 12 on the B and 10 12 on the high E but I'm bending those two spots and just finding stuff that works. So, uh, Now, because I'm trying lots of different things, I can go up to the BB box and get some of that sweet stuff, pull some of that sweet stuff. But then, you know, I'm not BB King, like I said. So, you know, I might want to go into some into my straight minor pentatonic blue scale stuff that I know well. But then I can always break it up with that BB, BB box to really, really mix it up um, like this. I'll just go I'll, I'll uh, play the regular minor pentatonic stuff. That a lot of you have seen and then i'll go in to the bb box and back out how's that sound brian that sounds good. any any important comments or loretta johnson says it sounds like eric clapton once again eric clapton was uh you know his hero is bb king so i agree it sounds like clapton and but and clapton truly took those elements and did do his own thing with it but when you hear those little um I know what it is. You're hearing when you hear. Those little trills, BB King took that a lot. I mean, I'm sorry, Clapton took that from BB King a lot. But Loretta, was that on uh, Facebook. Facebook? Hey, thanks. Thanks for chiming in. <laughs> uh, so, oh, yeah. So the regular, like, home row pentatonic, and then mixed in the BB and then out. And then. I would love for anyone that's still watching, I would like you to work on it and I'll play rhythm for you. All right, here we go.
Ah, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Brian, anything over there? David Connolly is asked, is that Lucille's sister? <laughs> is that Lucille's sister? I, I, oh, I'm off. Uh, David Collins, you said? David Collins from Facebook. David Collins from Facebook said, is that Lucille's sister? I don't know. We should find out. But uh, the song Going Down by Freddie King, no relation, uh, says he's going back to Chattanooga to sleep on Irene's floor. So let's just say Irene is uh, Lucille's sister tonight, just for tonight. Um, and Freddie King played at 335. Um, so, yes. But one other thing that I might as well talk about is, uh, is using it in the minor blues because it's going to be different. So instead of playing the 11th fret on the G string, we're just going to use this spot of the minor pentatonic real quick. So instead now it is the 12th fret of the G and the 10th fret of the B and then the 13th fret of the B. And then on the high E, it's still that same part of the box, uh, 10 to 12, but you also have the blues note in between for, for either. So that's just the blues scale or just the minor pentatonic. And so if you have a minor style blues in the style of, say, the thrill is gone, which would be a minor one chord, A minor. And then you'd have a minor four chord. And then you have uh, an F, F it, it changed depending on when they were playing it, but you could take like an F major, E minor as the turnaround back to A minor. And so when you have a minor blues, you can't play those sweet sassy notes. No sass. Minor blues takes no sass, Brian. Are you surprised by that? Minor blues, no sass, pure heartache. No sass, no uh no uh no sassy uh no sassy 6th, major 6, no sassy major 6. My my one of my guitar teachers is a country player named Bob Ryan. He always says, you know, play that major six. It's so sassy. <laughs> so anyway, no sass in the minor blues, but I'll say the chords as we do it and I'll use a looper. Check it out. So one, two, a minor. Now I'm going to go to D minor. Minor four chord, D minor, A minor, F major, E minor, back to A minor. There it is. So now you have this. that he would do in that minor setting that I would always do. That, I, I, when I hear that lick, I think it's always done exactly the position from the extended scale. Right? He would actually take his index finger and play it in still in that BB box. So 
it's a great lick to know because it just gives you a different perspective. Let me show you that. Uh, you just you're in that same spot where you're looking at the root on the B string, and fret, but it takes a lot of strength in your one finger and some callus. But you take that tenth fret on the high E and bend it, bend it up with the one finger. <laughs> can bend it a half step or you can bend it a whole step and uh that's just the 10th fret high e now when you're playing that 13th fret of the b string you could switch from your pinky to your ring finger on that 13th fret and bend that up a whole step to the main thing. Now, uh, Leo on Instagram. Leo, what's up? I'm going to mute that for a second because Leo on Instagram said, what distortion are you using? And I can't wait to tell you what distortion I'm using and have it be a, an official question to answer. Um, I'm actually not using a distortion pedal. I am using, um, yeah, Jake Flores on Instagram. Don't break a string. I was a little worried there. I'm not going to lie. This guitar traveled through different climates on an airplane. I, I was a little nervous there. I broke a string two weeks ago? Yeah, with the other guitar. Okay, yes, right. Yes. I'm trying here, Jake. You got a sound over here. I know. Oh, so I muted the, the amp. But basically, I have a clean tone on a just you know, entry level boss katana amp, you know, very affordable beginner kind of amp clean tone on that. And then I'm using an overdrive, which is a little different than, than distortion, but I'm going to actually unplug it here and go out of my way to show you. Oh, wait, let me, let me show you the setting I was using uh, a little bit like that. A little bit like that. This is the, uh, do you recognize the, uh, the face on there? <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, Schwarzenegger overdrive pedal. Ding! Available now at martymusic.com. Um, but no, it's a, it's a classic overdrive, so it just pushes, pushes the amp. Uh, now that I'm unplugged from it. I'm going to go back. I'm just going to go straight in. Brian, any other uh, important comments? No, people love the guitar, man. It's beautiful. Thank you. And thank you again. You got thank you to Gibson. Um, also, thank you to everyone watching. I really, really appreciate it. And this is called Back to Basics. So I hope it's a, either it's something that you know in the future you're going to tackle or it's a good review for you of something that you want to go back and cover again. Um, now here, wherever you're watching right now, whether it's Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, um, I would actually, you know, please encourage you to leave some questions and topics that you would like to see in the future. So I'm always, you know, taking care of the people that are actually tuning in and watching. So I want to thank you for that. Huge shout out to Gibson. And I don't worry, Gibson, I'm going to send this one back. Just have a, few things to get out of my system first with it. <laughs> um, but let's do one more rhythm, you guys. I want you to just work on anything that we talked about. Um, Will Yates on Facebook already popped his B string. S sorry about that. But if you put new quality strings on, you should be able to get through without breaking it. I mean, I guess it's always possible. Always possible. Anyway, rhythm and A, a straight up A blues. You guys do the thing, and then uh, and then we'll we'll get out of here. All right, here we go. Blues. You play the BB box, and I play the rhythm.
Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you, Gibson. The best guitars. Thank you. See you guys soon.